Hey YouTube, today we're going to be talking about taking things apart, <laughs> kind of obvious as you can see here, and voltage and amperage and other so on things, and uh, power converters and power supplies and fun stuff like that. Not super in depth, but enough to be cool and interesting. So let's begin. So as you can see here, you're probably wondering what this is. I had a one of those like multifunction stereo systems, as you can kind of see, I have it... Uh, disassembled here. <clears throat> so, you know, it's a tape player, a CD player, so on and so forth, and it kind of broke. The CD player kind of broke. The LED displays were really starting to go. So I said, I'll just chuck it. It's dead, dead enough. The only thing that really works is the tape players, and I'm going to try and salvage them. So that's going to be interesting. So to also prove some of the things we're going to be talking about today... Why better not? Why better then? It's a little hard to see. Oh, Neil Diamond. We have a tape of Neil Diamond. And of course, one of my more f uh, favorite 80s hits, if I can get this into focus. Of Pat Benatar. Yeah, who doesn't like Pat Benatar? So here we go. We have our tapes. I'm going to pop that one in for starters. And we have the main circuit board. So for now, all you need to know is that board back here and the transformer. Bring that into focus. The transformer here and the board here are the mainly the power supply and what takes the voltage from the outlet here and makes it usable for the devices. Here's the main board with your sound, the on-off button, so on and so forth. You know, there's your tape drive. I believe that bo that little guy down there is part of the radio, so on and so forth. So by starters, let's plug it in. See the LED goes on, and if we go like that... There we go, turns on. You know, we got volume. And... Let's start with that. So if we go here, and we can, it's a little hard to see, but we hit the play button. We make that just a little bit louder. So we're gonna pause that, you get the point. Tape's pretty shot, so that's why I'm using it, but hey, it's Pat Benatar. <laughs> And the main thing is, I've been looking at the tape drive to see, it's also kind of in the dark here, to see where we can severage it, to see where we can severage it and reuse it, so on and so forth. So if you notice here, you have your motor mechanism, your board mechanism, and the main thing I'm looking at is where... Does this here, so this in, the bo in this little board here, integrate, uh, integrated circuit board, meet with the rest of the tape, the tape board, the power board, so on and so forth. So if you look at all the wires coming off of it, this guy here is going to the motor. These guy, these got wires here are going through this bundle here and are going into the tape drive, so they're probably to the heads. <clears throat> and we look at these two wires down here. This one is going to the main board, and this one is going to what we believe is the power supply. Oops. And we hit it back on auxiliary, so we're going to change that back very quickly. There we go, back to tape. And again, you can see the LED display is kind of dying out here, so flip to auxiliary. CD, obviously, it's going to be silent. Ah, the <laughs> out completely. You can see the bottom of the two and the six are missing. And there we go. That was the radio. So you can see it's kind of really dilapidated, so on and so forth. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> now, the main thing we got to test is a look at it, and we're probably going to say this is the power wire. So this is where the tape drive is getting its power. And this is where the sound is traveling. 
because there's two main things that are needed to make run the tape drive, you know, CD drive, record player, whatever music device you need. You need power, and you need sound. So, to test that theory, if I can grab it, any second now, we have this thing called a multimeter. Ooh, ah. Uh, now, if you notice, multimeters will differ from model to model, but if you notice, there's a V at the top, that's for DC volts, and you can see we're putting it on 20, so up at that setting, it will give us accuracy, great accuracy for up to 20 volts, and that's about as high as it, the meter can go on that setting, but it'll give us more accuracy. So, like this setting down here, you know, now we have it on 2, that'll give us, a, you know, that'll be, the meter will go up to 2 volts can only on that setting, but it'll give us more accuracy. So, you know, it'll go farther down with the decimal smart. So let's set it for 20. That should be sufficient. We're going to turn it on. There we go. Zero, zero, zero. We wait for it to clear. And we're going to put it over here. And you can see our motor gear. Ooh, if I don't get caught, <laughs> you can see it's running. It's moving. So it's being powered, and we know vo voltage is traveling. So if we follow the wire... Ignoring the my cell phone <laughs> sending electromagnetic so signals, interrupting the uh, thing, the uh, speakers here. You can see the two wires run to that little point here. Put it back on tape. You can see that they run back to, and we're going to take our leads. We're going to ever so delicately, if I can do it with this one-handed, because it's extremely hard. We're going to try... Uh, maybe if we try from this angle. This is very... <laughs> kind of helps when you have two hands. So, got it in there. And if you notice, turn our meter around, you can see it says about 12.3 volts, so from there. So we're reading across there 12.3 volts, which means to power this tape mechanism here, we need 12 volts. Now, what's really fun is you also know is the meter is reading positive, which means there where the black wire is and the red wire is, is where the um, contacts are right. So the right wire is negative and the uh, bl uh, left wire is positive, black and red. So if we flip it, so, and we get that, if I can even <laughs> take on the challenge of doing it, and pop them in the holes there. So you can see I flipped them. And now you can see the meter is reading negative 12.3 volts. So that's how you can kind of figure out uh, not only how much voltage you need, but what is positive and what is negative. So we're going to shut off our meter. So we now know this outer wire here the one with the little red notch is ground for some reason and this white wire here is positive. We come back to our tape thing here we notice it's going in ground positive and why not we're gonna pull it. So you can see everything stops shuts down so on and so forth. I know very very fun. We're gonna lean this back lean this back. Now what we have here is we have a very Similar wire. And our famous and infamous double-A batteries. Ooh, or double-A batteries. Six-volt batteries. <laughs> we're going to go down. And we're going to look at it. And you can see they're the same. So we're going to plug this in. So 
So this is the one that runs the power supply. And this is the one that's going to run to the battery. But a quick note about how we knew that this, this was a power supply. See that giant metal square thing? And in a second I will actually point to it. That thingy. That thingy. That's mainly how we knew that was a power supply. Because the first step in power supplies is taking the 120 volts coming off and stepping it down to a more usable form. And that's how they do it with that there. And you can see it's quite huge. Has some nice copper wire inside if we can get that. So that's how we know um, that this was running on a lower voltage. And normally you'll find this in a lot of devices. Converter boxes, computers have power supplies. Um, I know with uh, Thinky smart, smartphone charger, chargers, the one I have over there on the wall... Is, uh, has like a mini power supply, it's kind of like a mini version of one of those, and it steps down the 120 volts into different forms, depending on whatever your device is. I know converter boxes for televisions, uh, laptop chargers have them, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but a lot of things have them, and you'll find a lot of things run here. And yes, I could get into a whole lecture on itself with my oscilloscope somewhere about full wave, rect how it gets the AC, which is a wave down to DC and full wave rectification and pulsating DC and a what is it? Pulsating DC and half wave AC and all sorts of fun like stuff like that. But that's going to be a video for another day. But back to what we we're going on. You can see there's the board and there it is. So obviously we know these are six volts. And we can kindly see if I can get them in focus. Yeah, it's hard, to, a little bit hard to see, but there's your plus, 6 volts, minus. Same here, same battery. And we're going to run the positive to the negative. We're going to take our wire here, and this is going to be quite interesting how we're going to fit it all in one thing. And not block the light. Now the red... The solid white one was the positive. We're going to attach that to here. And if I can figure out a way to get it closer, we are going to put it... Maybe if we move our meter. Yeah, if that's what we're going to do, we're going to move... <laughs> there goes all the screws. <laughs> Thank God I don't have to put this back together. But what we're going to do little on the dark side. But what we're going to do is we're going to put it here. We're going to take it and we're going to slide this board forward. And if you notice, I know I'm going to have to go. You can see I can tap and I close the connection. Oh my god, if my wires will stay still and connected. Uh, we're just going to pause this so I can finish the circuitry with two hands, which is much, much easier, and then we'll explain more. So there we go. You can see we've attached our wire here, and as soon as we go here, the mechanism starts up. And if I remove the wire, the mechanism stops. So you can see, start, stop, start, stop. And if we leave it in, we leave it running... We come back out, we uh, unstop it, unpause it, and we hit play, and we actually have this, ha, set the tape mode, there we go, one more time, unpause, On batteries! Yeah, it's phasing out a little, but if we pull it, stops. I can hear a little. <laughs> Again, the tape is pretty shot and worn out. But. So now if we disconnect it and hit play, nothing happens. But as soon as we hit the wire. So, so it doesn't matter where the voltage is coming from, 
as long as there's the right amount of voltage. And also amperage, which is basically a, the amount, uh, is basically the amount, but you never really have to worry that, about that as much. But you can see, yeah, you can hear that tape's pretty shot. Ha! <laughs> so hit, hit the tape with the back knot. There we go. It's pretty worn out shot. So on and so forth. So whether it's being trans power transformed from 120 volts off the wall to um, a through a power supply, or it's coming from two six volt batteries. As long as you get the, the voltage, and not as often, but you sometimes need to worry about the amperage right, you can actually power device. It really doesn't make a difference. Voltage is voltage. And hopefully later I'll have something about speakers and waves and fun stuff like that. But, <laughs> one more time. Yeah, I can hear the end of the tapes, and it's kind of worn out. So... And we'll even probably later be talking about the sound here and just uh, <laughs> so look forward for more videos and other things. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye.